Hello, hello. Looks like it's time, so let's go. Hello. You caught me in the middle of pulling out a bag of random thread, because I have some ideas for some dice. Don't know if I'll use it or not, but I figured I'd pull it out. So I'll, uh, I'll explain that in just a second. Let me put this away. So, uh, the plan is to make some Halloween dice today. Uh, yes, it's a little, it seems a little bit early, but it's, I don't know, I figure it's better to get things done earlier so that they're actually ready for October, because <laughs> things just take a lot of time to make. Um, one of the sets I want to do is like a spider themed set, and so I was debating between using thread or using some of this like angel hair, hair stuff. Um, because this is very, very thin and it doesn't, it, it shows up, but it's like very. This looks more realistic, I'd say. This this one looks actually more like spiderweb when it's in resin. And this one will look probably a little bit more cartoony. Um, and I have a couple of options for spiders, too. So I'll need to decide which direction I want to go. A little bit more cartoony, a little bit more realistic. But there's kind of a couple options there. Um, I'm also going to do some blank inserts. Um, so these don't have numbers on them. And my plan there is I want to make some that are like kind of look kind of fiery from one side going up into clear and then I'm gonna like paint them so that they look like little lanterns to go in dice. Just like, yeah, that's the idea. Stretch! <laughs> Hello the Lorax! Oh, uh oh, there's a kitty cat out there. We're stretching right at the beginning of stream. <laughs> I'm not complaining though, it's probably a good idea. I've been sitting here getting some stuff ready. Oh, yeah, you can hear my back pop. <laughs> you can also hear a cat being sad outside the door. I think that's Luna. <laughs> I have some very, very uh, needy cats. Um, and then finally, actually not finally, I think we're gonna work on four different sets today. And that's three of them. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, third one, I just want to do, like, an orange and purple set. Um, I did, I tried out, like, a different technique recently. Let me grab a couple of them. I posted about it in the Discord. Cat! I mean, I could probably bring the cat in here. She can't run around, though. I have stuff left out from soap making. Add cat hair to the mix, of course. Hey, kitty cat. This is Luna. She's a, she's a fluffy girl. Hello. I'm afraid I can't let you go. I still have soap stuff on the table over there, so it wouldn't be safe for you to run around in here. <laughs> she's a she's a very needy cat. She requires constant attention. All right. No, I'm sorry. You're going back out. You're gonna be sad. Say hi. Bye. We'll see if she continues to scream. I didn't give her enough attention. Um, what I was going to say though is I want to do a set of orange and purple dice. Uh, I was trying something out. I pulled these out last night from the molds um, with kind of like tendrils of, of mica powder in there. There's some ink in there too, but kind of tendrils of mica powder. And I want to mess around with that idea some more. So I'm going to try that with orange and purple, I think. And maybe a little bit of this like color shift, because it kind of color shifts between purple and yellowish. So, we're going we're gonna to try that, but with those colors instead. I'm still not sure if I want to put something else in there too, color the resin at all, or um, add some shimmer to it. Oh, sorry, my nose is very sniffy. Um... But we'll, we'll decide on that. I, at the moment, I'm just thinking orange and then purple with some of the color shift in it. So I feel like that'd be a nice combo. Um, and then I mentioned the lanterns. Okay. Um, the fourth thing I think I might want to work on is I kind of want to make some, like, Frankenstein dice. So the idea is a whole bunch of different layers and stuff, like, at different angles and things. Um, I'm debating whether I want to do those with just leftover resin from other things, 
or if I want to try and pick some sort of color scheme and stick to it, go with kind of like fleshy and green colors, go like actual Frankenstein. I'm kind of leaning towards just doing ran all the random colors from other dice. I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not sure. Not sure on that. Hmm. I think, I think maybe just doing like the leftover resin from, from other dice sets. I think that's going to be not necessarily, e I'll say easier, but also I think it'll be more varied if I do that. Okay. Um, so let's get, let's get our molds out. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do, because I'm switching over so that I have D2s, so little coins for all of my dice sets. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that for the lantern set. Not sure on that yet. <sighs> it's fine. Let me, let me grab all my molds out. Um, while I'm doing that, how are you today? Glad you could stop by. 68... I had a little bit of a sore throat, personally, just le recently, which is kind of a, a pain, but otherwise I'm doing well. I've been busy. I went in, on like a an impromptu road trip with a friend to go pick up a car, so I was gone for two days, and one of those days was spent in a car, because it was 12 hours there and 12 hours back. Also, I have bubble tea. Okay. So, and there's all of our ones for that. Set those over here. And, okay, so the spiders. Spider dice. A couple of options, like I mentioned. Um, we could go thread or really like thin, wispy um, stuff. Let me show you the options for spiders because there's a couple of options. Ah. Here's I got, let me just use some tweezers here so they don't fall all over the place. There we go. So let me grab one of each and I'll show you what I got. So I could go like big kind of big kind of cartoony sequin spider. I have these in like some various colors and stuff. Or I could go like little tiny oops. I'm gonna put this on my palm so that hopefully I can make it so you can see. There we go, little tiny gold glitter spiders. Um like, I, I would normally go more realistic, I think, but I already have a couple of, like, hmm. Oh, you know, I should do a color with this. I was thinking of doing black, but maybe I should do, like, purple. I have a couple of, of Halloween sets that I've already made, which I can show to you. Um, and they're, they both have a lot of, like, they both have a lot of white and they're very neutral. Got a couple of random ones. So these are from two different sets. I was doing kind of like a ghosty set. So these glow in the dark and they're kind of wisp have kind of some wisps and stuff in there. But there's just all white and then these ones are black and white. So <laughs> maybe I should do some color. Some sort of color. Um in which case I could also do a mix of like these. I could do a mix of these. It's not going to be this thick. I would divide it up so there was thinner strands. And then do the little tiny spiders with a color of some sort. That sounds... That's, I think that's going to be my plan. It's going to be my plan. Unless someone interjects and has something that they are passionate about on that. I think I'm going to do the little tiny metal spiders. A mix of this and then some sort of color, either 
I'm thinking either like blue or purple because both of those are kind of dark. Um, maybe blue. I think maybe blue. Let's go like a royal blue. I'll pull out my royal blue. And that'll be good because that'll be a little bit different from all the black and white ones I've been doing. Cool. I'm going to pull out the molds for those. I'm going to put my big spider sequins away. We'll, do, we'll use those someday. We'll use those someday. Uh, but these, let's see, I also want these to be down. I have kind of two different setups for my molds. I have ones with the highest number at the bottom of the mold, like these ones, so you see the 1 is up, so the 20 is on the other side. And I have ones with the 20 face up. Um, and the reason for that is that depending on what I want to make, I want them different directions. So for these, I'm probably gonna put the spiders next to the 20 face because you want to see that when you get, you know, you roll a high number, you want to see the spider type thing. That's where the interest is. Um, so I want these actually to have the highest number at the bottom because these are kind of heavy and so they're gonna try and sink to the bottom. So it's easy to just place it on that 20 face um, and not fight it, not not uh, fight gravity on that one. And four. And well, although I really only have a face up one of these, but that's fine. We can make that work. We can make that work. Because, uh, oh wait, no, I already have one. Never mind. I had one set aside for this. We're good. Yeah, so that's D2 with the, with the upper face down. There's all of those. That's all for the spider ones. Let's set these somewhere off the side here. Uh, there we go. Good enough. Good enough. All right. And then I have my stuff for the lanterns. Oh, let me pull out the stuff for the Frankenstein. Those ones doesn't really matter which direction is up. I think I'm going to have it with the highest number down again. And that way if I do anything with like glitter and stuff, it'll end up on the, the higher side. Um, I don't really expect to do too much with glitter, but, uh, you know, just in case. I need to sort through my molds at some point. Some of them are getting a little bit old. A little bit old and grimy. It's not even the grimy that's a problem, it's just that uh, you take dice out of molds enough, you scratch, start scratching them up just a little bit, and so they just get a little bit less shiny and stuff over time, which isn't a huge deal. I, you know, I polish everything, but it just makes it so it takes more work. 94. Ah, uh, Frankenstein. Okay. And I might not even use all of these. I think I'm just going to kind of slowly add stuff, like a little bit at a time, and I don't want them all to be even. But I'll pull them all out anyways just so I have them. <laughs> so I don't forget a die. Because that's something that I would do. I would absolutely forget. I'd pull out two D12s on different days. I forget to do a, a D4 or something like that. Um, I think that's everything. Let me, let me find some mixing cups. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So there's one for orange. Whoa! They don't drop it. Orange. Uh, yeah, I reuse my mixing cups, which. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm just cheap. What can I say? So we have those for our purple and our orange. Uh, spider one. I don't know if I need a mixing cup for the spider one. Because I could just swirl the blue in with like a toothpick type thing. Um, do I want to do blue resin? I think I want to do blue resin for that. And the, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, so I could either put some of the blue pigment on like a, a 
a toothpick or whatever and just kind of like swirl it in. But I'm gonna have enough stuff in there between the thread and the um, well, angel hair or whatever you want to call it um, that I think it's gonna be difficult to move around and it's just gonna kind of uh, shove that stuff away from the where I'm moving my, my, my toothpick. But if I do blue resin I'm just gonna pour that in and so it'll just move around the um, all of the cobwebs. So I think we're gonna do we're gonna do blue resin. We're gonna try and pour that one pretty early so that the blue will actually mix with the clear a bit. Ooh, do I wanna add a little bit of shimmer? Do I wanna add a little bit of shimmer to the resin? Um I mean I'm always a fan of adding a little bit of shimmer to the resin. Uh, I think, I think I don't need to. I think let's not, let's not on that one. Say we, let's not and say we did. Um, okay, and then the lantern one. So this is going to be the blank inserts. I'm going to try and make it kind of look like fires coming out from one side. And then I'll, I'm going to paint the blank inserts to kind of look like little lanterns of various shapes. Um, so along the edges kind of the two sides, maybe put like a little little like loop on the top so they look like little lanterns. We'll see how it goes. This is this is just my idea. Um, these ones, the the pigments, I think I am gonna do that where I take a toothpick and just swirl it in a little bit. But I have a glow in the dark yellow and I have some like shimmery it's like white but then it shimmers gold. It's very hard to show on camera. Yeah, it's hard to show on camera. Um, but it's white, and then like if you have l light at the right angle, it's gold. So that might be pretty. This one, I'm debating if I want to just add a little bit of shimmer to all of the resin. Like all of the resin that's going in, just add, give it a little bit of that kind of gold shimmer to it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Because that might be... I don't know, that might be kind of, uh, kind of nifty. We'll go with nifty, that's a good word. Um, but yeah, either, either that or do kind of a tendril of that as well. Um, in which case, since it's a powdered pigment, I'd need to mix it with some resin. Well, I'll, I'll pull it out. Either way, some of this is going to need to be mixed with some resin. So I think that's good. I got those. Um, is that everything? I think that's all of the pigments accounted for. If I'm looking at this correctly. Oh, I guess the one thing is with the gold and not the gold, the purple and the orange. Is there anything else that I want to add? Like any sort of like foil or glitter? I kind of I'm kind of thinking not, just because I was going to add the color shift, and I, I would like that to be noticeable. But at the same time, I worry that it's going to be kind of boring. <laughs> Maybe not boring, but I don't know. It's not. It's just not going to have that pizzazz in it. It needs something more. But I do have a tendency to like overcomplicate things. So maybe we'll just leave that as it is. We'll just do clear resin with the oversaturated micropigments in there. Cool. So before I actually start mixing up all the pigments, there's one thing I want to do to prepare some of my materials. Um, it's probably not necessary, but I do this anyways. Um, ever since I used some um, holographic butterfly glitter and then when I went to sand it the holographicness got sanded off. Um, I like to put a little bit of um, UV resin on all some of my inserts like these spiders just so I have a little bit of a buffer. A little bit of a buffer between the insert and the the face so that when it's sanding and polishing it's not going to get like scratched up or anything like that. Uh, let's go over this corner. So 
So let me grab, I'm gonna grab out. I think there's just gonna be one spider per die. That makes sense to me, one spider per die. And there's eight dice with the, uh, the D2. So I need eight little spiders. Eight little spiders. Here's one little spider. Okay. You find eight little spiders. One, two. I've also seemed to have found some, some four leaf clovers. Three. Four. Five. Luckily, there seems to be more than I was thinking there might be in here. I might even be able to do another set of these at some point if they if people like them. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, I don't have that many left over. That's okay though. I have like two left over. That makes sense. Oh no, there's some more in there actually. There's a couple more in there that have gotten mixed up with everything else. Like how these four leaf clovers are over in the little spider container. I do worry that maybe the dice are going to end up looking a little repetitive, but... And by that I mean, like, usually I try to do, like, different numbers of things and that sort of stuff so that there's some variation between the dice, like have a different number of butterfly-shaped glitters type thing. So I, I worry that this having a spider and cobwebs, spider and cobwebs, spider and cobwebs, I worry that'll get a little repetitive, but I think that's going to be the best design choice, because I don't want dice without a spider. I mean, alternatively, I could just put a spider in the d20. Hmm, because I don't think about that. That could be an option. I could just put a spider in the d20. Just have, like, cobweb dice, and then just a spider in the d20. I almost like that better. Huh. That's one of those decisions where I'm not... I worry that if I only have it in the d20, it's not going to read as cobwebs for the other dice. But at the same time, I think that will add some more um, interest, almost, to the dice. Because you have all of the other dice and just like, okay, cobwebs, cobwebs, cobwebs. That's hard to say three times fast. Um, cobwebs, cobwebs, cobwebs. Yeah, that's hard to say. Um, but then you get to the D20 and you see the spider and it's like, oh, everything makes sense now. So maybe I'll just do one spider. I think I'm just going to do one spider in the D20. And maybe one in the D2. I think one in the D20 and one in the D2. And part of the reason I'm going to do one in the D2 is because it's kind of flat and has a lot of space, and so having a spider on there will add some interest as well. Also, I feel like it makes more sense to have two spiders sharing a web than eight, but I still want to cover these in a little bit of, of UV resin, so let me grab that. Let me grab the UV resin. Alright. So I've got my little, my little UV light here. Just a cheap, like, nail light that I got on Amazon a long while back. Let's try and get everything untangled over here. And then I got a little bit of UV resin. There's quite a bit left in here, but for some reason it's all, like, at the bottom of the bottle, so I have that upside down. And my fancy UV resin tools, which is just a straight pin. But let's, uh, see if we can get some of this on top of those spiders. I'm trying to get some onto the pin because it's just I feel like the pin is the pin is nice because it's small enough to kind of move things um what's the word I'm looking for? Not specifically. Um not delicately. Oh what's that word? Um precisely. There we go. Precisely is the word I was looking for. Um, but at the same time, it's hard to get the resin onto the, uh, on here, because it's such a small little area, just kind of goes right through the resin. Also, this resin is getting a little bit, 
uh, gummy. Uh, yeah, because I don't want, I don't really need too much. I just want a little bit on the spider to act as a buffer. So put it, I want to get it all over the legs. Just so that I don't have something like right against the side of the the um, the die that ends up getting like um, sanded, because that would just be it. Just I don't think that would work out well with the little metal figures. It just doesn't seem like that would work out well. So let's make sure all the legs and everything are covered, so they don't end up like stabbing into the side of the mold or something and being in the way. I do that for both of these spiders. Yeah, I probably should, should have grabbed some, some newer resin out of the bottle. Let's do that. This stuff is a little bit gummy. Let's just, just put a little, little dollop right there. And we'll, we'll take from that instead. Take from that instead of all this gunk. This stuff's a little bit gunky. I'm going to move these over even. That sounded strange. I'm going to move these over even. I'm even going to move these over so that I have some new clean space to work with. Because those are just kind of... Uh, the, yeah, the resin I grabbed for my little, little thing here was getting kind of sticky. Alright, yeah, this, this is much easier to move around. Yeah, I have, I have a few Halloween ideas written down. I, like, I, man, I like Halloween. Halloween is probably, I like dressing up. I like kind of creepy things. Like, Halloween's just great. Um, but I need to, you know, I was, I was, uh, uh, trying to think up ideas and finally asked my brother and he just started naming Halloween things not like dice ideas or anything just like he's like haunted house uh ghosts uh vampires like he's just naming Halloween things and I'm like excellent excellent these are great ideas what can I do with these it was just kind of a, a funny little thing where it's wasn't directly related to the dice, but it, it, just just getting the, those brain juices flowing, getting some ideas put down. Uh, I felt a little bit like late, lately. I felt a little bit like, oh man, I don't know what I want to make. To be fair, I do that all the time when it comes to dice. I'm just like, I don't know what I want to make. I don't know, because you know, it's like I like doing the dice that require a lot more pre-planning like I like doing like little dioramas and dice and stuff but those also require pre-planning which is something that I'm not great at oh that's very sweet we've been slowly trying all the different bubble tea flavors from this uh, bubble tea truck that's near where we live And this one I think is passion fruit, which it was a n one that we hadn't tried before. It's very, very sweet. Run that once more, and then we flip them over. Do the back as well, just in case there's a little bit of of, of resin there that didn't get cured. Um, but otherwise, I think we're done with these, and we'll place those into the mold. Those away. Oh. Yep, yeah, so that'll be good. I should probably also start taking some of this thread. I don't think I need it to be very long. And then I'm also going to uh, start splitting this up into 
individual threads. So instead of instead of this, we're gonna get this, which is much smaller. And I think that'll that'll be nice actually. It'll add a little bit of variation in like thickness and stuff in there. I don't know that yeah I'll I guess do I want so there's like six threads there I think I might be able to cut um, some of those to make them um, shorter for a couple of the dice because I think a couple of them won't need all that long of thread. Uh, I'm just thinking here of how I'm gonna put things into the mold because that's gonna be the next thing is putting the spiders and all the cobwebs, cobwebs, into the molds. Um, I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna get the thread to be kind of mixed in with the um, the smaller filament. And I'm not sure. I'm trying to like. Maybe add a little bit of the filament, then a little bit of the thread. To be fair, I could divide these up even smaller, because these are our twisted... Oh, maybe I'll divide these up even smaller. This is also a twisted thread. Hi, Mama! How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, here, I can, I can divide these up even smaller, maybe. I'm making Halloween themed dice. If you couldn't tell by the title of the stream. <laughs> Try anyways, I'm getting things figured out. I'm figuring out some like spider themed ones at the moment. Oh yeah, that'll work even better. That's even thinner. Perfect. It's a little bit wavy. Like not quite as, as like straight as the other kind, but I think I like that it's a little bit thinner. So, we'll go with that. Ah, drawing a new emote. That's cool. I'm good, I'm good. I've had a little bit of a sore throat recently, which is kind of a pain. But otherwise, I am doing well. Alright. Let's get this put away. I'm, I'm excited to be... I, uh, I went on an impromptu road trip, uh, which was a very long drive. And so I'm glad, I'm glad to be home and back to working on things. That's why I didn't stream uh, on Wednesday. It's because I had a, a friend call me like, was it Tuesday? No, Monday night. I had a friend call me Monday night and say, hey, could you drive with me, come with me to go pick up a, a car from like four states over? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, I guess. But it was, you know, a 12-hour drive each way. So, it was, a, it was a long drive. I'm not a huge... I don't know, I'm not a big road trip person. I always find it tiring to go on long trips. <laughs> That's a cute little emo. Ah. Oh no. Trying to get that spider in here in a spot so you'll be able to see it once there we go. So I'm kind of trying to put it in like a little corner almost. So it's in a spot that you'll actually be able to see. I don't want it to be covered up by the um the symbol that's on the 20 face. So there's that in there, and then I wanted to put the other one in the D2. This one will be easier to place, I imagine. Yeah, we'll just put that. Right there. Cool. Alright, now I want to fill these with some of the thread and such. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, it was, it was 12 hours both directions, so I, I spent Tuesday driving, going there. I didn't actually drive, I, but yeah, I spent Tuesday going there, 12 hour car trip, and then spent Wednesday driving back. <laughs> so, I was gone for two days, and one of those days was spent in a car. It was, it was a long trip. But I, like, yeah, the, the day after, so Thursday, Thursday, 
the day after on Thursday, it was very much a uh, one of those days where I woke up and I'm like, no one talked to me. <laughs> I want to be left alone. I was just so, like, tired. I was grumpy. To be fair, that's... I, I've found... I, like, I don't know. I guess I'm aware enough now. Uh, the biggest indicator of what my mood is going to be like is how much sleep I got the night before. So, like, if I didn't sleep enough, like, I can... You know, if I go to bed really late, like, I can almost guarantee that I'm going to have a bad day the next day. But I was just, like, so exhausted from being in a car for so long. Uh, I didn't even drive most of it. I only drove, like, three of those hours. Of those 24 hours. But. I don't know. Still tiring. But we're back to dice. I'm going to grab some of this stuff. And this stuff is technically glass. I'm going to pull out, I don't know when this is from. I pr you probably couldn't sell this now because it's like, even it's bad for your lungs or something. Yeah. Angel hair is a fine glass fiber. Keep away from eyes and mouth. Avoid prolonged handling. Keep out of the reach of children. <laughs> oh, your longest flight was 12 hours. You couldn't sleep. Uncomfortable. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, that that does not sound fun. So we're gonna try and put some of these little fibers into the molds. I'm trying to kind of spread them out a little bit so they're not all clumped up. Um. Yeah, once they're once they're in, encased in resin, it'll be fine. But this stuff is. I don't want to breathe this stuff in. So, well, I don't want to get end up with like, oops, glass splinters or anything either. So we'll just use the tweezers for this. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like I'd love to travel, but also I don't necessarily like traveling. It's like, I'd love to see places and go places, but, like, the process of just, like, getting there and stuff is just like, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get all this stuff into the molds. I'm trying to spread some of this stuff out. But. Oh, a uh, 12 hour flight to go back to France was better. Oh, you took your allergy pills and slept like a big baby. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you got some rest on the flight back, at least. Alright, let me... I can see all of these little things sticking up. Trying to, trying to get everything into the molds. There's just these very, very fine... You can't even see it. They're like hairs. Let's see if I can make so you can see. Oh yeah, you can't even see it on camera. Oh, you can kind of see it. Yeah, I wish you could just teleport. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, can't I just be there? And then not be there? Yeah, I don't know. But also, I, like, I, um... I was out of town, when was that? Uh, when was it that I was out of town? Um, I was helping my grandparents move. It might have been last month, I think. And so that one I did actually drive for seven or eight hours um, home. So helping my grandparents move. Um, and so like, I don't know, I feel like I've been away a bit recently, which I can't exactly work from somewhere that's not here. Can't do this remotely. I think angel hair might be food. This is, I don't know when this is from, but it's supposed to be like a type of tinsel. It's supposed to be like a type of tinsel or something. Um, but... 
Yeah, I, I, like I said, I get the feeling that this probably isn't something you can get anymore. Because I bet it's considered dangerous. But it's like a flame-resistant tinsel. Because it's made out of glass. So I'm trying to, trying to avoid touching it too much. Because, like, if you've ever, if you've ever, like, touched insulation, that's, that's, I guess, fiberglass. But, it gets itchy. Don't want to do that. But I, my goal here is to make it look like cobwebs. I want it to end up looking like cobwebs. So, um... I've got a couple of little spider uh, charm glitter things that are in a couple of these. And then we're going to try and add some, some stuff that looks all cobwebby. But it, this stuff's a pain to work with. I've done, I've worked with it before. <clears throat> but it's just so, like, fine. That, and it's kind of, it has a little bit of rigid, rigidity. It has a little bit of like, like, it holds its shape. Angel hair, oh, it's beef meat? What am I thinking of? I might be thinking of angel food cake. I might be thinking of angel food cake. Here. Yeah. To be fair, this is not like a thing. This is not something that I've like heard of before. Uh, so it's not like something that ever. If you said angel hair, people here might think of that too. This is this is not like a well known thing. At least I I've never heard of it before. Come on. I'm trying to get all of the little pieces into the mods. I'd rather not try to sand this stuff either. Alright. Yeah, there's there's little hairs all over the place, but we're gonna we're gonna add some more here. I am kind of trying to build up a little bit of a like a spidery network here because I'm going to add some thread as well for some like bigger uh, like a thicker strands that, that I have here which are much easier to see on camera but I don't want them all to just be at the bottom so if I can build up a little bit of like other stuff in here I might be able to get this to be like suspended a little bit Actually, that might be working okay. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to add a little bit more of this stuff. And then add a little bit more of the thread. And so on and so forth. That's my plan, anyway. Alright, add a little bit more of the thread. Uh, I wonder how much of this thread I really want in here. I don't know. Um, let me see if I can get some of this stuff to... I want it kind of to not just be loops all going the same direction, which is kind of what's happening at the moment. So let's see if we can get some of this to go other directions. But it is staying suspended, which is what I was hoping for. I guess we'll see how everything looks... Uh, see how everything looks uh, once it's out of the mold. I'm going to try adding, I want to get all of these, I, I don't really want just loops. I'm trying to make it so it's not just like loops in there going round and round and round. I'd like some, it to move in strange ways. But I think I might want a little bit more of this angel hair in there. trying to get all of those loose ends tucked in which is easier said than done 
they just keep popping up. But maybe I don't need as much as I was thinking. I think maybe I don't need as much as I was thinking, partially because I'm going to add some color to this as well. So I think I think that'll be fine. There's still some some of those little tiny hairs sticking up. They're like little baby hairs. So I try to make those dice with liquid inside. Um, I've made some. I've made a couple of liquid core dice. I do have um, some over here that are all, that are Halloween themed. Cause I made I made these that have little. They have little bat glitters. Oops, they have little. They have little bat. This one has little bat glitters in it. It has a, some other little glitters in it as well. But it has little little tiny bat shaped glitters in it. Yeah, this is this is this is part of the one the black and white set that I showed earlier. Oh, huh, the gray. Hmm. Some of the mica powders that I use, sometimes they like clump up a bit. And it just very, depends on the mica powder. Although in this case it works, so I'm okay, but some of the gray, and gray mica in there is clumped up a bit. But yeah, there's little, little tiny bats in there. If it'll see if I can get it to focus. Kind of hard to tell, but yeah, there's little tiny, little tiny bat glitters. Little tiny bat glitters. I should definitely do more liquid cores. Those, those are kind of fun to do. Um, I think I have, I have one that I need to ink that'll be up in my shop next shop update if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so, but that one's just going to be like purple. No, no fancy glitter or anything. Just, just purple uh, mica powder. Okay, let's call that good for the D20. I think we're going to call that good for the D20. Um, it has one little piece of thread and a bunch of the angel hair. Not a ton, but I think that when, when we add the color, uh, that'll be part of the focus anyway. And to be fair, I am still debating if I want to add anything else, like gold foil. I could add some gold foil. Hmm. Do I want to add something like that? Or a little bit of a gold shimmer, maybe? Could add a little bit of a gold shimmer. That might be kind of cool. Ah, they're so, yeah, these are so fine. You can't even like see them on the camera. So let's see if we can get this next thread doing something. And I'm just gonna try and kind of put this in here so that it goes all sorts of different directions. Uh, yeah, that seems to be working. We're gonna add a little bit more of this angel hair stuff. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of using the light to try and figure out where it is because it's so thin. Very, very thin. It's almost difficult to grab my tweezers. There we go. But yeah, maybe I'll have to do some more some more liquid core dice. Because they're fun to make. I just never, like, I, I don't think about it in the moment. Uh, it's another one of those things where it takes a certain amount of pre-planning. And so I just always forget. I think... Let's just cut this one off. I'm just going to cut that one off. Call that good for that thread. Yeah, I think that's good enough. We'll call that good for the, the D12. I'm just, I'm just moving down the line and doing all of these. Yep, so... Um, Man, I have been thinking about trying to do some like dice making YouTube videos. I really should get on that. 
I was just, I started filming some stuff for the galaxy dice that I make, and then I forgot to, like, film the sanding part of it. So I need to make some more so that I can film the sanding part of it. But, maybe I'll try doing a different kind of die. Again, pre-planning. Gotta, gotta think about what I'm doing before I actually do it. Not my strong suit. I'm going with a D4. Alright. I need another one of these threads. And I actually split those from this. So let's do that again. We're going to make this even thinner. If I can, if I can actually get my fingernail between the two strands here. There we go. There we go. Haha! -ha, I got it! Oh. Okay, cool. We've got two more strands now. Um, let's see, what was I talking about? You know, the, sorry, this is just a random thought. Uh, I was just going to say, I feel like my interests change so frequently that uh, it would be difficult for me to have some sort of consistent brand. <laughs> Not, not, I don't mean it like that, but like, if you go and watch like a stream uh, from someone, partially because they talk about something specific that you're interested in, I'm just over here like, I don't know what I'm going to be interested in next week because it changes. So, I don't know, to be fair, I guess that could be, could be my brand. But also, I never talk about things that I'm interested in. That's, I don't know, that's something that, uh, like, yeah, I, I get, I tend to get obsessed with, like, one piece of media at a time, and then I will be super invested in that for a while, and then I'll find a different piece of media, be super invested in that. I probably should just try and diversify the stuff that I watch and listen to and read and all that sort of stuff. If I want to be a more interesting person, <laughs> actually, like, go and, and read different things. Watch different shows. All that sort of stuff. But, like I said, I tend to get into, like, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. And then, that just, like, takes up all of my brain space. But also, it's one of those things where it's like, I'll get into something, and it, it'll... I was talking to my friend about this in the car during our 12-hour drive back. Um, but I was, talk, I was saying that, like, cause we, were t we were talking about, like, listening to friends talk about things that we don't understand anything about. And how it's, like, still good to be, like, asking questions and... and being excited for them because we both um you know we're, we're we both have kind of a similar brain and that we'll, we'll also get into like one thing and then have a lot of information about it with nowhere to put that information like my friend was um telling me all sorts of k-pop facts on the way back because we were listening to um her old the music that was on her, her iPod from forever ago, um, she just had all sorts of, of facts about the various K-pop groups that we were listening to. Because she was super into K-pop uh, a long while ago. Um, but, yeah, I, it, I, I was basically saying that, like, I don't like telling people what I'm interested in. I don't know, it just seems embarrassing almost. I don't know. It's it, there's a strange thing. I feel like I get embarrassed more easily now. I don't know why. It's just like no one can know that I have interests. But at the same time, like I, I have trouble shutting up. It's like I need to tell someone about this thing that I'm interested in. And so I also have trouble just like I, I end up talking about it anyways. It's just like, hey, have you guys heard of this band? 
or I've, I, okay, but I know about this, about this show. I have all sorts of random information. And it's always strange when someone brings up something casual about something that I got super invested in and know way too much information about. Um, Cause it's just like, I know, I know far too much about this. And it's gonna, I'm gonna seem very strange if I start telling you all of that information. Cause it's just random information. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, usually it's like some, usually it's like a TV show or a, a band or a musical. Those are the things that I've gotten really into in the past. Although now that I think about it, um, the two most recent things that I've gotten super into were both like web series type things. Like, I guess neither of them have been bands or musicals or TV shows. They've been like, uh, like things on like YouTube and stuff. Because one of them was Critical Role. Um, which is kind of funny. I guess that, I guess Critical Role kind of led me here to a, in a very roundabout way, making dice. Because how I ended up making dice was a D and D buddy talked about it, um, had talked about trying to make dice, and I was like, oh, I have I have some resin and stuff. I could try doing that. Um, and so I did. But the way that I got invited to that D and D group was because I was taking a, a history class, and. Oh, excuse me, uh, a guy there was wearing a Critical Role shirt. And I was like, oh, cool, a nice shirt. And so then we got to talking and, like, became friends. And he invited me to the a d and group that he was part of. So in a strange roundabout way, Critical Role got me into making dice. Because uh, it got me invited to a and d group. Just kind of a funny, crazy random happenstance. Um... But I, I guess that's just kind of how things happen, too. I feel like a lot of... A lot of things kind of are planned, and a lot of things aren't planned. Because, like, I didn't plan to sell the dice that I was making. But now that, like, I've started doing it, it's like, okay, I need to start be thinking about what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it. If I want to do this professionally. Because, like, when I, f the, the, I, I started making dice, I did not expect to sell any. Um, I did, I, I battled with myself so long deciding whether I should get, uh, masters made or not. And, like, I, I almost did not get masters made so that I could sell them, because I'm like, oh, they're expensive. I don't, like, what's the point of me getting them? I'm not going to sell any anyways. But I was just like, okay, I'm going to get them just so that I can sell them if I want to in the future. Um, and so I did. And it was funny because, like, you know, I started making some, some dice. Um, I had an Etsy shop already that I had just a few random things in. To be honest, I didn't really sell anything on it, but I had like some soap there. Um, cause I did some soap making before this. Um, which I, you know, I'd, I'd done soap making and then sold it at like local holiday bazaars and stuff, which was fun. Um, but I put up a couple of sets of dice for sale on my Etsy, not expecting to sell them at all. Um, and then I sold them in like a week. <laughs> Just like, oh, there's a market for this. Cool. So I just kind of kept making more dice and more dice and more dice. And now I make a lot of dice. And I'm hoping to branch out to keycaps soon. That's something I'm working on. I have um, I have a keycap that I'm going to use to make my molds in the polishing tumbler right now. So I'm... Oh, I don't actually have any angel hair in this one. Uh, Yeah, I'm... 
finishing uh, polishing that up and then I'm gonna make some some molds we'll start having some keycaps and that'll be exciting because I, I have been wanting oh there's a little bit in there I have been wanting to make keycaps ever since it was brought up to me and I get the feeling that keycaps are gonna be quite a bit less work to make than dice um, which uh, yeah that sounds kind of bad I'm just like oh yeah we'll do those because they're easier but like I think that I could make a lot more of them as long as I had the molds available to me I could make a lot of keycaps um, compared to a set of dice because they take a lot less sanding and less resin like I could do you know I, each one of these dice probably has about we'll say it has about the same amount of resin as a keycap so I could make seven different keycaps whereas I'm making one set of dice so I'm, I'm kind of excited to get that um, going up and running but we'll uh, yeah I still have to set stuff up for that still working on on getting my molds and everything made for that Trying to get my thread in here. Ah. All right. Uh, oh, ah. This is probably a very strange stream to watch because you probably cannot see the little uh, wispy things that I'm putting into these dice at all. I can barely see them. Can't imagine it on camera. And the only way that I'm really seeing them is by holding them up so that I can kind of get the light to reflect off of things. Oh boy. You know what I might do? I might just go around and like run my scissors along the top of all of these and just kind of cut things down a little bit. I wonder if that would work. It might work. I might try that. Oops. I accidentally just pulled things out of this one, which is not what I wanted to do. I'm trying to get all that in there. Oh well. Alright. And I need more. Need more thread. Again. Yep. I am I I'm taking slightly more talking breaks because like I said I've had a little bit of a sore throat recently although I don't think talking has made it any worse and I think I just caught a bug from my brother because he had a sore throat earlier too this is getting better now though all right I don't know why I'm doing that no that's why I'm doing that that's right Let's try and get this in here all funky. Uh, yeah, let's let's see here. Let's add a little bit more of this stuff. To be fair, ever since I pulled out the angel hair, I've had angel eyes by Abba stuck in my head. So that's that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm always so wary of uh, copyright stuff. That seems unrelated, but uh, it's part of the reason I don't ever like sing anything on stream. It's because, man, I don't want to get like in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble for music stuff. That'd just be a pain. All right, let me put this in here. It kind of looks like the thread is just floating because you can't really see the, uh, the little angel hairs. All right, all right, all right, all right. Cool, that's all in there. And I think we are, I am going to kind of trim across the top. I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. That'll hopefully get everything lying flat in there and not up against the uh, up against the lid because I don't want to try and sand this stuff that's that, that's my thought process there is I don't want to try and sand it okay ah. 
yeah, this stuff is kind of, like I said, it has some, like, rigidity to it. It's kind of stiff. So it's hard to get it to go where I want it to because it tries to straighten itself back out. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff sticking up here. And then we're gonna add some string. Some of this thread. <sighs> yeah, I'm... I don't know. Let's see, I was just gonna say, let's see, what have I been up to? I'm a very boring person. It's been nice getting to, like, see folks again. Now that we're all vaccinated. That has been, that has been good. Um. Oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna do this for the D2. This is gonna be interesting. I might just need things to be shorter. I might have to cut things shorter for the D2. Or try to wrap them on the inside. Like everything else. This. Yeah, I think we're gonna cut things a little bit shorter. I think that's what's gonna end up having to happen. Cut things a little bit shorter. I'll just kind of put them in here. Hopefully I put them in here. They're kind of sticking out the top, which is not what I wanted. All right, I'm gonna grab some even shorter pieces. Put them the other direction. Okay. I think there's probably probably enough of that. Well, that's enough of that. Uh, and then we're gonna put a little tiny piece of thread in here too. Yeah, hopefully the lid helps hold some of this stuff down. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff to hold everything in place on this one because everything's kind of trying to pop out the top yeah it's kind of everything's kind of trying to ex escape this one you can see oh there you can kind of see the threads in there everything's kind of trying to escape but that's okay We'll, uh, we'll make that work. We'll make it work. <clears throat> All right, let's put this away. Get this out of the way. Okay, and get our thread out of the way. Don't use that either. Let me just put these away. I'm saying way a lot. So that's all done. Got all of our thread and everything in there. It's gonna have some some nice dark blue to go with it as well. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Make sure we have everything else how we want it. Okay, let's see here. What else do we have to do? Okay, so that's just gonna be clear resin, and then it's gonna have a dark blue resin with it. Um. We'll probably have like gold numbers, I think. Match the match the spiders. Um, this one's gonna be blank inserts. I'm still not sure if I want to have the resin, all of the resin have like a little bit of kind of a gold shimmer to it, or if I want there to be kind of like a streak of gold shimmer, because I want it to look kind of fiery. And I feel like if I ha give it a little bit of a gold shimmer, it might look kind of glowy. 
oh, you know what I should do? I'm going to put a streak of the gold shimmer, and then when I put those into the dice molds, I'll give that a little bit of the, the, the gold shimmer to it, so it's kind of like it's letting off light. That's what I'm going to do. So we'll do, we'll do a streak of, of the gold, and then I'll use a little tiny bit of that in the resin that's going to go around the blank inserts. Yes. Okay. And then this is glow in the dark yellow. Sorry, I'm chewing on boba. I also have something. A seed in my teeth. I can feel it. Okay. So this is a yellow glow in the dark. It's very orange. Um, I don't need a ton of this. I just want a little bit of glow, maybe. That's just going to be kind of a streak as well through there. So we're going to add a little bit, of, a little bit of resin with some of the glow. Hmm, I can feel the seed in my teeth. And then we're going to do kind of a streak of this shimmery gold as well. Same kind of thing, like I mentioned. Um, just a little tiny bit that is going to be kind of spiraling through the, the resin. And then we've got our orange and our yellow over here that are liquid pigments, so we will just kind of use a, like a toothpick for those. Grab those out. And the goal is to make something that's kind of a little fiery. Um, this set over here going to be orange and purple because we're working on Halloween dice and I want these to be very pigmented because the way that this works um, we're going to do kind of like mica swirls um, and the way that that works is the mica powder mica is like a rock and so it's heavier than the resin so if we mix this with some resin but we have a lot of mica powder in that. Um, it will try to sink. We'll end up with those cool swirls. But I also don't want to do too much. That's plenty. That's going to be plenty. Since we're going to have both orange and purple. Yeah, that's going to be more than enough orange. Uh, and then the purple, I kind of want to maybe add a little bit of this multi-chrome powder as well. What I should do at some point is I should try, I should try this with a, uh, like just a, like a multi-chrome or something pigment. Because if that works, it'd be really pretty. I feel like I've seen stuff like that before. Uh, I might need to grab some new stir sticks. These ones are getting a little, oh there, this one's good. So I, I am trying to think... I want this to be visible, the multi-chrome. I want it to be visible, but I also need enough pigment in here for things to actually sink. <sighs> hmm. I am, like I said, I'm thinking, um, I don't know if I want to put something else in the resin itself, too. Like, apart from just the swirls, if I want to put something else. Oh, wait. What if I put this in the resin itself and then have both of these dropping through it? Oh, I think I'm going to do that. Do I, do I want to do that? I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this multi-chrome stuff into the resin itself, and then it'll have the orange and the purple swirls going through it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I have a plan now. Let me grab a little mixing cup for that. Uh, grab a mixing cup. There we go. That one's good. Okay, cool. I have a plan. Um, I don't think... Sorry, I'm thinking about how much resin I need. Um, so this will probably be about 20 milliliters, and those will be five each, probably. Um, this stuff gets everywhere, so let's see if we can even <laughs> scoop some without making a giant mess, but it's super pretty. Look at that. Look at that. Oh man, it's so pretty. So I'm gonna try and scoop some of this into our little our little 
mixing cup here. And that's going to be more than enough. And I'm going to put this lid on before it flies everywhere. It's so, like, thin. Like, it's so, um, yeah, thin's word, the right word. Um, that, like, any little piece of, any little bit of air makes it go everywhere. But cool. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna mix that into the resin, and then we'll add drops of the the orange and the purple. Although in which case I might want a little bit more. Like I said, we're gonna do about five five milliliters each of these. So each set of dice takes about thirty milliliters. So I'm gonna do twenty milliliters of just the clear resin, and then about five each of these. I'm trying to think of how much pigment I want compared to how much resin I want because I do want it to sink. We're gonna add a little bit more of the purple. Just a little bit. I think I think we should be good. I think I added more than enough with the uh, last time I tested this. Um, I just pulled some some dice out last night, where I was kind of testing out this this idea with the heavily pigmented resin that was sinking through, but it kind of sank a lot. So I'm gonna try and do maybe a little bit less of the colors and maybe. Not, yeah, a little bit less colored resin and a little bit less pigment in that resin, so maybe it won't sink quite as much. I think that's everything. I think that's everything ready to go. Um, let me just double check. Got all of our pigments for that. Got all of our pigments for that. Oh, you know, I'm going to pull out one last thing. Pull out a fate dice, fudge dice, whichever you want to call it, mold. Because um, I think we're going to have some leftover resin. And so I might end up wanting to do something with that. Just so I have it out, ready to go. Oh, I guess the last thing. I wanted to cut the little, the little hairs that are sticking out of the top of these. And get them flush. Okay. Just because I don't want to have to try and deal with those with the lids and everything. This one I think I can probably tuck in there. Sorry, I got a little, little bit out of the way just so I can see it. Um, I think I've mentioned... I can't remember what I was just about to say. I was about to say something and I can't remember what it was. Um, oh, I mentioned that uh, the way I was finding these is by holding it in the light. So that I can see the little wispies because they're so hard to see that I'm just using like the light refraction off of them um, to even see them. Mm -hmm. Like I'd like to avoid getting all of this, getting this stuff all over the place, but yeah, I'd rather not be breathing this in. You can get some of this just tucked in. Get that tucked into the D6. Just kind of sticking up all over the place. And there we go. Yeah, there's. Let me see if I can get it so you can see. Yeah, you can see kind of all the stuff sticking up there. That's what I'm trying to get down into the molds, if at all possible. And if not, I'm just going to cut it. Yeah, we're just going to, I got some of it down, we're just going to cut the rest so that it's flush. I really don't like having this stuff in the air. But, that's, yeah. I'd rather not have this stuff everywhere. We'll try to avoid that as much as possible. I was hoping that some of it would just, like, fall into the, the molds, but... Doesn't sound like that's happening. And the D2 is just going to be a mess because I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Okay. Now I think we are ready. Okay. So, um, before I get the resin out, there's some safety equipment I got to put on. Let me see if these are these gloves usable. Oh, these gloves might actually be usable. Mm, maybe not. 
Nah, never mind. All right, let me grab some new gloves. So, I need some gloves to protect my thingies. Protect my thingies from the resin. And I need my respirator. Which does mean that I am going to sound a little bit muffled. Just saying, let me get one last drink of bubble tea. Whatever. But I'm gonna be, gonna be a little bit muffled for the rest of the stream. So I'm gonna sound like this. I'll try to talk as clearly as possible, so hopefully you guys can still understand me. Let's grab a mixing cup. There's a mixing cup. Let's grab a stir stick. There's a stir stick. All right. And let's grab our resin. from my, it's like, why is it damp on my glove? I think I pro it's probably from my bubble tea. There's condensation. Okay, let me grab my resin. So we're going to be using a two-part resin here. Um, I'm going to go a little bit quiet here for a moment. I can't pour and talk at, I can't measure and talk at the same time. So, I'm going to do 50 milliliters of each, and then I will be right back. So, give it a sec. Fifty milliliters of that one. Yep, fifty milliliters. Why is that so damp? Weird. And let's get fifty milliliters of this one. milliliters total. Okay. And let's get this mixed up. That'll, this will take a couple minutes as we get things mixed up. Um, I want to make sure this stuff gets mixed completely. Because if it's not mixed completely, it won't set up properly. And so yeah, there's a, there's a couple things that will make it so that resin does not set up properly. One of them is not having the correct uh, amount of each kind, so you know I want exactly 50 milliliters of each. And the next one is it not being mixed completely, because you need it to be mixed so that part A can react with part B. So I want to make sure that this is completely mixed up. Um, and then actually, like the third thing that I always think of is moisture. Um, if you have anything that has water in it. That will uh, that will make it so that the resin does not set properly. So that's why I use you know alcohol inks because they don't they don't affect the the curing uh, and a lot of dry pigments and that sort of stuff. Because again they don't affect the curing. I don't know where all of this moisture on my hands is coming from though. Some of that is resin now actually. 
but this will take a minute. Uh, I did I did a dice trade recently. That was a lot of fun. I got some really beautiful dice out of it, and I made some made some fun dice. Um, I'll have to I'll have to post photos at some point of the dice that I made. I posted photos of the ones that I got on my social media recently, but. Um, I made a couple of, like, Minecraft D6s, as well as uh, a set of, uh, a seven-piece set for um, the person's character. But, the, I'm, I know, I'm real, still really proud of those Minecraft D6s. I feel like they turned out super cute. I might have to make another, some more for myself or something. It gave me a good excuse, though, to, to make those, because I kind of had the, uh, that idea of making, like, Minecraft block D6s, or someone gave me that idea, I don't remember, um, and, you know, I'm, all, like I said, I'm very, I'm super wary of, like, copyright stuff, so I didn't want to, like, I don't want to make Minecraft dice and sell them, so this worked as a great excuse to be able to make some Minecraft dice and just trade, <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't profiting off of them. Yeah, I'm maybe a little bit too cautious with some of that stuff. I, I had a friend that was talking to me yesterday, day before yesterday, and asked if I had ever thought of, like, making, um, like, props or, like, replicas, 3D printing, like, props or replicas or something from, like, video games and movies and stuff and selling those on Etsy, and I'm like, that'd be really cool, but I'm, like, so worried about getting sued. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Right, we're getting close, but there's still some streaks in here. That's how you can tell when it's all mixed completely, um, is when there's no more little streaks, and there's definitely still some streaks in there. I'm going to keep stirring, I'm going to scrape the sides, make sure there's no, like, one part, part A or part B, that got stuck to the side. Oops. Scrape that so there's nothing, nothing stuck there, scrape this bottom, stir it a little bit more. Yeah, there's still some streaks in there. Yep. I have a I have a pressure pot, so I tend to over mix my resin a little bit. Um, I'd rather add a little bit of extra air than not have it mixed completely, since I have something that will make it so you can't see the air bubbles. I don't want to add in like any giant amounts of air, of course, but um, you know uh, the the little tiny bubbles they will they will get squished down super super small, so you can't even see them in the pressure pot. I, um, the pressure pot has been awesome. Before I started, so I'd done a little bit of resin before I started doing dice, just kind of messing around with it, trying out, making some jewelry, that sort of thing. Um, but I got the, the pressure pot because of the dice, because I didn't want air bubbles in the dice, which would make it so that they weren't weighted as well, I figured, because the air bubbles would try to raise to the surface, you'd end up with one side that had quite a bit more, um, quite a few more air bubbles than the other side, so it'd be weighted weird. Um, so that's why I got the, the pressure pot. But now that I've got it, it's like I can't go back. And I want all of my things to be bubble, fr bubble free. So I do also use kind of a thicker resin. There's some thinner resins out there. Um, I got some liquid diamonds to try out. I tried it out once. I feel like maybe I didn't get the um, measuring quite perfect or something, because it didn't cure quite right. Um, and it's very, very thin. It's almost like water. And so it didn't actually have like any bubbles to it. Whereas this stuff is more honey-ish. Especially as, as I get going, it gets thicker and thicker. So. To be fair, I like that though. A lot of the things that I, I make I like having it a little bit thicker. I feel like it works well for like dirty pores and that sort of stuff. It just seems to work well for the designs that I like to make. All right, let's see. What do we want to do first here? I think let's fill in some clear to these. We're gonna quick fill in a little bit of clear into our into our spider set. We're also gonna fill in a little bit of clear to our lantern set as well. 
But so let's let's do that first. Okay, this seems to be this seems to be all mixed. I don't see any streaks left. I scraped the sides and the bottom. It seems to be it seems to be good. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna add some clear to all of these. Probably about a little bit more than halfway. Maybe two thirds. We'll do ten milliliters of the dark blue. That seems reasonable. Trying to add this without getting resin everywhere, which is always easier said than done, especially with me. I make a mess all the time with anything that I do. It's not just resin. I mean, you know, I've realized that I tend to pick messy crafts that are things that maybe I shouldn't make a mess with, like resin. You don't really want resin everywhere. Um, soap. I did soap making. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, soap making and well I mean painting too but you know I've always made a mess painting all right I think like I said I'm gonna go about two-thirds and we'll do a third of the dark blue and then I think the, the D2 I think I'm gonna put the dark blue kind of down in the little point there, so I'll just pour that to the side. Let me get that drip. Okay. Um, let me do I'm going to do about 10-ish milliliters of this. Maybe not even that. No, probably about 10. About ten. I'm gonna do a nice dark blue because I feel like that'll complement the spider webs and stuff nicely. Maybe a couple drops. Nice dark, kind of navy blue. This, this one's labeled as royal blue, which I can see that. Kind of a cobalt, maybe cobalt, navy. Maybe navy's a little bit more muted. I don't know. But we'll do our blue in there. Blue, da da da. And yeah, maybe I should have had a little bit more clear. A little bit more clear to a couple of these. Okay. I think we're good. A little bit of this blue. I, I like. I, 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 um, I've done a lot of like black and white sets for the Halloween so far. I, okay, I've only done two Halloween sets so far, but they're both kind of like very monochrome. So I wanted something with a little bit of color. So we're gonna we're gonna do the blue. I debated purple, but the purple that I have that's dark just does not work well with resin. <laughs> Maybe sounds a little bit funky, but. Oh, perfect. I think I actually have like, just the right amount. Just the right amount of resin. I want these to be domed a little bit. I want a little bit of extra resin. Um, and that's because, like I mentioned before, the in the pressure pot, it's going to push down all the bubbles until they're really, really small. And so I need a little bit of resin to take their place um, when that happens. I'm going to put a little bit on the lids as well so I don't get any air bubbles trapped in the numbers. But, you know, I don't want any huge air bubbles or anything. I'll put that there. And, alright. I'm going to just mix in a little bit of extra blue here. Because that one could use a little bit of extra. Alright. Got a little bit of extra blue. And I'm going to spritz all of these down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Because that helps break the surface tension on the top and helps the bubbles pop. Let me grab my, grab my little tray here that I use to put all of my, all of my uh, things in the pressure pot. So let me, let me set these over here out of the way. Okay. 
and we'll get those set on here to just sit for a minute with the lids off and let uh, all the air bubbles rise to the surface. those let those sit for a minute and while we do that let's do I'm actually going to do this next because I want these to be able to sink into the resin so this one I need about 20 milliliters I think I got 20 milliliters and then we're going to do about five of each of those See how this this I haven't actually tried it before with this purple stuff in the resin itself, the the multi-chrome. So see how that ends up looking. It's kind of interesting. I think maybe it'll it looks kind of dark like this, but I think maybe once uh, the purple and the orange are going through it, it'll be good and kind of spooky Halloweenish. So let's uh, do that in about five milliliters of each of these. Okay. Okay. Let's maybe do a little bit of extra here. Just a little bit over five because I just want to make sure we have enough of everything. Um, and then we'll mix in, mix in my mica here. I just want to make sure I have enough mica so that it's actually going to be weighed down. That's what I'm thinking about at the moment. Um, I'm debating whether I should add a little bit more mica powder just so that it's even heavier and it's going to sink even more. Or if that'll be too much. Okay, this one. This one I think is nice and saturated because the bottom. Yeah, it's. Yeah, this one has plenty of pigment in it. This one, I think this one maybe I could, eh, might be okay, might be okay, might be okay. You know what, we're going to try it, now I'm going to add a little bit more, where's the, here's purple, we're going to add just a little bit more purple, because I, oops, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Not too much more, but just a little bit more. So I can make sure that, that that resin is like super pigmented. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for super pigmented resin. So let's mix that purple in. We want that this, this resin to be super heavy. Alright. Alright, let's do these. Mostly the clear with the um, the multi-chrome in it. Yeah, by itself it looks kind of funky. The clear with the multi-chrome looks kind of funky. I don't know. Let's see if I can get it so you can see. Yeah, it's like not the most attractive by itself. Although it does have some good, like, lots of color in it. But I think maybe once it has the orange and the purple behind it, it's going to look nice. Let's fix this together a second. Go down the line. Hopefully I have enough of this resin. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might have wanted to do a little bit more, but that's okay. We'll, we'll try and fill these up so that they're as even as possible. I'm trying to get it so that it's, of course, some of that fine glitter in all of them. Oops, I maybe put a little bit too much in the D8 there, but that's okay. I can always scoop a little bit out as well. Alright, yeah. There's a little bit of resin in here. I just need to actually get it out of the cup. I'm gonna just scrape that. Yeah. I'm going to use maybe a little bit more resin. That's okay. Like I said, I'm going to, I'll just steal some out of 
Look at these filler ones. Get a little bit too much into the D8. I need some for the D2 as well. Hmm. Maybe did not sink this through very well. Let's try and get. I'm gonna get a couple of those bigger pieces and add just a little bit more for the D2. Try and mix that up a little bit. I'm also gonna take some out of the D20 because it's comparatively has quite a bit more. That's the thing with the D20, is just kind of trying to figure out the, um, uh, there's kind of two ways you can go. You can go by, like, percentage, or you can go by the same thickness at, like, the top, and that's where I'm kind of, like, uh, I don't know which one I'm going to go for. Okay, let's add some of the D2. Again, I'm going to probably add the colors more so down by the bottom, so that's fine. And we need more of this in the D6 for sure. Kind of a little bit close on this resin. Kind of a little bit close on this resin. I mean, obviously, I ha added more resin. But let's see here. Don't take too much from the D8. I want there to be enough like space for the the colors to actually drop through. That that's what it is too. I'm gonna add the orange and the purple, but I want there to be enough enough uh, like of the clear resin that there's actually a spot for the orange and the purple to swirl. Okay, this last little bit I'm going to smear on the lid of the D2 because I want the like tip of this actually to clear. I'm going to have the other colors kind of down by the down by the like thicker part. There's that. All right, we've got our orange and our purple. There's a lot of, a lot of air bubbles there. Okay, so I'm gonna add. I'm gonna try to add like a little bit on. Like I don't want them right. I don't want them to be mixed too much. I'm gonna gonna try and do purple on one side, and then kind of orange on the other. I think. Oh yeah, the orange is definitely sinking. Orange is definitely sinking. And purple's moving around, so I think we're probably we've probably got enough pigment for sure. Another one of those little tiny threads. Uh, let me see here. Is that one? A little bit of orange on that corner, and then a little bit of purple along here. I'm gonna try and match match it up because, like, if I mix the purple and the orange, I'm gonna get brown. So I want them to like swirl, but I don't want them to like mix too much. That's not not the look I'm going for. Them, them mixing completely is not the look I'm going for at all. I'm kind of trying to do like a half and half thing. So purple on one side. Oh yeah, the purple's definitely sinking as well. That's good. So I think this will work out just fine. All right. So have that lined up. Yep. Okay. So purple right here. And orange is over here. Okay. Moving on. I'm just going to go down the line and do that with all of these. Kind of put it so that purple's in one spot, orange is in another. Try and get it so that it's, you know, all pigmented across the top here. Alright. Um, yeah, I think this might turn out. I was originally just going to do like a purple and orange set of dice. Like just purple and orange, like maybe kind of la like loose layers type thing. But I, I think this might turn out pretty cool. I'm kind of excited. Oops, I usually have the purple first. Oh well. Yeah, it's definitely sinking, so I definitely had enough pigment. Definitely had enough pigment in here. Add a little bit more orange. Alright, 
that's that. There's that. Yeah, I um I had done this kind of accidentally where I put like a whole bunch of mica powder into resin and then it sank. Uh, and I did, hadn't thought much about it until someone mentioned it to me again. I'm like, oh, wait, I've done that before. <laughs> I should try doing that on purpose because it looks cool. I didn't even think about it. Um, I got a little bit more orange here. And I, I really like, I don't know, mica powders make for some really pretty pigments in resin. Um, I had quite a few mica powders already, kind of amusingly, um, just because you use them in soap making as well. Um, they don't have the same shimmer to them though when they're in the soap. Soap's kind of opaque, so it takes away a lot of the shimmer. So it's been it's kind of nice that I can use these uh, in a way that's you know I already had them, but like they they almost work better now than they did in the way I was using them before. Alright, we can do kind of half and half purple, half and half orange, and this B6. Alright, I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to fill it in so there's no, like, gaps. Like, I want it to, I want them to actually be right next to each other. So, that's the, that's the goal here. And here and orange here all right moving on got quite a bit more orange than purple left I feel like that's okay though Some purple I think these are good, this is a good purple and a good orange to go together, too. So, I don't know, I feel like these might turn out pretty cool. Come on, bubble, get out of there. Alright, let me make sure I have that, yep, okay. Make sure I got my things all in, in the right spot, so I don't accidentally put the purple and the orange on here backwards and then end up with brown. That's, that was my concern, anyway. Uh, and then we're going to add some of this to the B2. And again, I am going to kind of try and do half and half-ish. Not like, it doesn't have to be even, but I want, you know, purple in one spot, orange in another. Because I want it to match. I want it to match the others. Match the other dice. And we're going to put our last little bit on the lids, on the lid there. Just a little bit of, a little bit of the orange as well. Alright, let me scrape these down. Put all those air bubbles on top. Let them pop. We're going to set these off to the side as well. Let them sit for another minute. Just like with the blue. I'll put the blue down again actually too. And get those out of the way. And then we're going to move over to our blank inserts for the lanterns. See how that goes. I think that the I think the idea for the lanterns is a cool one, but we'll see we'll see how it like looks if we'll see if I can execute it properly. I'll show you what it comes down to. Let's see if I can execute it properly. So the blank inserts. I want them to. I don't know what I'm going to do for the D2. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do for the D2. For these. Um, I don't know if I want to... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I want to do. So I just want to do, like... A D2 that has the, um, um, uh, uh, is completely like the colors of the lantern, maybe? 
So they're just kind of the flame colors. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, while I, while I figure that out, I'm going to fill these up part of the way with some clear. Uh, yeah, maybe only halfway or so with clear. Because we're going to be adding a bit of, of other colors here because we want these to look kind of fiery on the inside, but kind of like it's coming from one side. That's the goal, anyway. So we're going to add a bunch of oranges and yellows and stuff. A little bit of gold. Alright. I'm going to add some to here. Just a dollop. Don't need very much. A little bit to here. Just a dollop. Don't need very much. I'll mix those up. These are just going to be I'm gonna have little swirls of these. Just a little bit. So there's this one, which is a glow in the dark yellow, and this one, which is, it looks white, but it has a gold shimmer to it. So if you like catch the light at the right angle, it looks gold. So I'm just gonna, mix, I'm mixing up just a little bit of these. And I'm going to add just a little bit to all of these. I'm literally going to add like a drop. Oh yeah, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the gold. Eh, eh it's hard to see. Maybe I'll see if I can show you on the D6. But I'm just going to add a drop of this to each one. And the reason I'm just doing I'm just doing a drop for the moment is that it's going to get swirled up when uh, we add the uh, the liquid pigments. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, it's kind of kind of golden. Kind of hard to see the gold. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna they're gonna get all swirled up when I add the the liquid pigments. So we're just gonna add a drop of each of these for now. Okay, again, maybe I think maybe for the for the D2, I am going to do the same thing, basically, but it's just not going to end up as a lantern. Or maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll draw a lantern on it. In which case, eh, it's just going to end up being the fiery, sort of. So I'm going to do the way that I usually do things, which is kind of like the bottom here is going to be sort of like the bottom. So we're going to add our pigment there. And a little bit more to the D20, because the D20 has quite a bit more resin. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing with our glow-in-the-dark yellow. We're going to add just a drop. Not in the same spot, but kind of next to it. Okay, so as much as possible. Not like as much resin as possible, but as, as like, I don't know. As closely as possible to kind of what we did before with just, just adding a drop. And these are just going to be kind of, I don't know, little kind of additional colors and stuff that are going to go with the, the um, liquid pigments, which I think are going to be a lot more noticeable. They're going to be a lot more prominent. That's the word I'm looking for. They're going to be a lot more prominent. Oh, although now that I think about it, I'm not actually adding any more resin, so I need to actually add some more. I need to add more clear. What am I thinking? Those aren't resin. I need to add more clear to all of these, which is fine. I want these to be full up, like, all the way. That's fine, though. Those will get spread out a little bit as I add more clear. It works out fine. And then we're going to take our liquid pigments and put them on like a toothpick and in this case a coffee stirrer and we're going to swirl those around in here from the one side try and make it look like there's kind of flames coming up i really i've gotten i don't know recently i really like this white to gold shimmer i'm not quite sure why it's just i don't know it's just pretty Ooh, let's not add too much resin there Alright, so 
that to the side for now. And we're gonna do our swirls of orange Ooh, and yellow if I can get the if I can get the bottles open. Get her pinked with a bit of a uh, bit of pigment. All right, let's just open these. So let's uh, let's start with the yellow. So I'm just gonna take yellow, put them on my coffee stirrer here, and I'm gonna go in here and kind of swirl it a bit. And that's good. I'm just gonna go down the line and do that for for all of these. Just swirl in a little bit of yellow. And kind of mix up the the other colors that I added in there already as well. Um, the yellow doesn't show up a ton right now. It'll probably show up more when it doesn't have a teal background. Um, scattering over there. But uh, the orange I think is going to be a lot more prominent anyway. Which is kind of what I expected, which is fine. Up. And I'm I'm kind of dabbing some of the, the the ink off onto the other ones so that I don't have a ton of it on my stir stick here for these small slightly smaller dice. And I can go back this way. And this one. And we want some in the D2 as well. I think I want a little bit more in the D4 actually, but we'll add, add some of this, some of this yellow. Alright, I'm going to call that good on the yellow. So, yellow is all done now. Moving on, we're going to do some orange. And the orange I think is going to be a lot more bold, which is kind of what I want. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, I think I want a little bit more orange than that. I think I want even more orange than I just got. Because I want the orange, I want the orange to be prominent. I want it to be noticeable. I'm going to put some of it over here. I'll get to that in a moment. But I want it to be definitely have like tendrils in there that are orange. There. That's better. Moving on to the D12. Okay. Definitely got some orange there. Um, I have found that when I do this sometimes all of it still ends up right next to the, the pap. Because I go and I swirl it in there and then I pull this out and all of the color comes with it. But that's okay. I kind of want the orange to be kind of more towards the base anyways, just because it's darker, and so I want to be able to see the yellow and everything. So if the orange ends up closer to the, this one face, that's fine. As long as I have tendrils of stuff coming up. Let's get, let's get some of that orange in here. Come on. That one might need a little bit more orange, but we'll just, we'll just steal some orange from the one next to it and put it in there. I think maybe I'll do a little bit of kind of orange resin for the, the lids. So I want that to be kind of the base. It's going to get kind of painted over a little bit anyways. That's my plan. Um, I want to turn these into like little lanterns, make them look like little lanterns. Um, and so I'm going to kind of paint them where they have like a top and a bottom to them that kind of cover part of this. And yeah, this could use a little bit more, a little bit more orange. A little more orange to it. I'm still going to dab a little bit off on there. It's kind of funny how much this looks like iodine almost, like, yeah, it looks very much like iodine to me when it's, uh, with this this teal and the yellow background, very iodine like. Okay, and there's that. And what's going on? There's a speck of something there. Don't want that. I'm gonna 
Yeah, it's going to be there in a second, but let's see. Let's do our D4 first. The D4 holds so little resin. It's almost, like, difficult to, uh, to get, uh, anything in there. We'll add a little bit more orange to the, the D2. Why not? There we go. That's cool. The D2 looks very fiery. That's what I was going for with the D2. I wanted it to look very fiery. Alright, and then let's add some let's add some orangish resin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit in here where I had the um the glow in the dark resin. We're just gonna add a little bit of orange to that. And we're gonna add that to the lids. This would be probably kind of dark, but like I said, that's, that's okay. Yeah, just some, some nice bright orange resin. Right. Although for the D2, it might just be clear on the lids. Because of how it, it's shaped kind of differently. So I'm just angel eyes by... Abba stuck in my head. We've moved on from the angel hair stuff. I still have angel eyes by Abba stuck in my head, though. Alright. Alright, put some nice orange on here. Put a little tiny bit of orange towards the bottom here. Is where I want it to be orangiest. But we're gonna put we're gonna put clear on this one for the most part. Alright. Alright, so we've got those. Let's spread those down now as well. So it doesn't look like we have quite enough for the set of fake dice. Um, but I can start on my Frankenstein dice. Um, my thought was um, I want layers of like lots of different colors and stuff, so I'm going to add a little bit more resin to our mica ones over here. I'm going to water those down as it were. And we're just going to start adding like a first layer with some various colors to some of these molds over here. Let me get, let me get these out of the way. get our other molds over here and I don't necessarily need to add resin to all of them right this second um they're like I, I want them all to be oh this, this needs a little bit more resin actually give a second a couple of these need just a tiny bit more resin there we go that's better um What was I saying? What was I saying? Um, uh, oh, not enough, yeah. So, so the, the, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of mica pigmented um, layers to those, but maybe not all of them, because I want them all to be different. That's, that's kind of what it, it is. As, um, so for the Frankenstein dice, I want them all to be different layers, different angles, just kind of strange, strange stuff like that. So I'm, I'm going to take probably this clear and I'm going to make some other colors as well. But let's get the, we can get some orange and some purple into a couple of these first. Um, and I'm going to take the lids off because I don't, I'm not going to need them today. So I want enough layers that it's not like, don't even have to think about it. Um, okay. But, I am going to grab some empty, or some, some little, little other random molds here, uh, and use those, because I want some of this stuff to be at an angle, I want everything to be like kind of slightly different. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of this orange, but I'm going to have it at a strange angle like this. 
so that it's not flat on the bottom. Let's grab, we'll grab a D10 here. We're going to do the same sort of thing. Again, I don't want it to be I don't want it to be flat on the bottom. I want there to be lots of different angles and colors on every face. Okay, there's that. Um, I do actually think I want to fill in a couple of crystals too for a different mission. That opposite side. Um, okay, and it's an orange and a couple. One of them I think we could do like we could do flat. Let me see if I can just do a, a drop, a couple of drops of color. That might be cool if I can do that. Yeah, we're just gonna try to do a couple of drops of orange. I want them all to be like all sorts of colors so many different colors. Let's do some purple and maybe the D12. Let's add some glitter to this. We're going to add some glitter to this one. Yeah, this one could use some glitter. There. That one's going to have glitter in it as well. So I, want, I want all the layers to be different and weird and like not match. So. Add some purple with some glitter. I want this one at an angle as well, though. So we'll add a bit of that. I think we've got. We'll do another D10, but with the purple. Yeah, alright. These, these are gonna be fun to place into the pressure pot for sure. At all of these different angles that I have tilted up. Um, and I think, like, I, I, I'll do the D2 for this later because it doesn't need to have the exact same colors. There's a D8, I'm going to get to do a little bit on the bottom. I think I'm going to do, I might do it so that the D4 doesn't have one of these colors at the base. Because um, I don't want them all to be just the, the orange and the, I don't want them all to just be the orange and the purple and everything. So the D2 and the D4 are going to have some different colors. So, we've got those. Um, got a little bit of extra resin left over. Oh, well, uh, here, we'll do some, we'll do some blue. We'll do blue into the bottom of the D4. Nice clear blue. And I guess I could always angle it on the lid. That's an option. I could always just put it on the lid. I'm going to put some nice clear blue into the, the 4. Alright, perfect. No, it's not the same. I, I should have done that into one of these other ones too. But here, I'll put a drop. I'll put a drop in the D6. It's kind of off to the side enough. I don't think it's going to mix. All right. Cool. Two, four, six, seven. All right. Uh, we fill in a couple of crystals here. I'm still building up some um, crystals for a commission. Someone, someone wanted to just get a bunch of a bunch of resin crystals from me, and it's taken quite a bit longer than I expected it to. But uh, a cup is actually a lot. Like uh, the measurement of a cup, yeah, it's actually quite a bit. So I've got a bit of resin left over. <sighs> Yeah, it's not quite 10 milliliters, so it's not quite enough. We could do a set of 2D6. Let's maybe do a set of 2D6. And then, uh, yeah, let's do a set of 2D6 with these. Just the clear. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll do we'll do two d six with the clear, and uh, the two different oranges that I've left. That seems like it makes sense. Doing oranges, just all of the oranges. All right. Uh, here I'll add. Oops. And I have a, just a piece of iridescent foil for these as well. Bits and pieces. Iridescent foil. Just for a little bit of extra flavor there. Um, and we're going to add our orange. And our orange resin. It's always nice to have some... I don't know. I like I, I do mostly the seven-piece sets, but I like having some of the fate dice and some D6s and stuff too. Usually I'll do like a set of four D6s. Um, but yeah, set of two is fine. Do a pair of pair of D sixes. That'd be fun. There's this one. And I'm gonna add a little bit more clear on this as well. I think that will use up use up our clear orange here. Get it out of the way. Translucent, that's the word I was looking for. Not clear, but translucent orange. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit more clear. The lids. Get the cat hair off of the lids. There's always at least one piece of cat hair that wants to try and make it into my make it into my dice. This time it was on the D6 side. Get that off to the side. All right. Uh, use this last little bit of blue. Just there. I also want to do at least one uh, the full crystal D4 shape. Um, part of that is because I uh, use those as like little freebies that I throw in this stuff. So it's good to have good to have some some spare D4s. I have quite a few, so I'm not too worried about it. But I usually try to make at least one when I make dice, so that I know that I'll have enough. So we'll make, I'm going to make a couple of D4s, I think. Some of our leftover resin here. There's one. But I think let's make, let me make some more crystals here too. I want to get these done. I'm so close to having enough crystals made. I just want to get them, I want to get them done. Mark them off my to-do list. Pretty much all of the, the orange there. I'll throw some of this purple into one. Glittery purple. Alright. Okay. Um, and we'll just, I think we'll just pick a, some sort of color. Let's pick a color for this last little bit, and we'll make another D4 in that. 
Um, yeah, I'll just I'm just gonna drop a drop, put a drop of blue, and then put a drop of green. I'm not gonna mix it up all the way. I'm just gonna scrape it into a D4. I got some greens, so I originally I got like a set of of um, alcohol inks, and it had you know all of the colors. It didn't have red. I guess it had pink. Um, but the green of that, once you mix it into resin, it looked blue. It was very blue. Um, and so I ended up getting some actual like green, green ones more recently. Ooh, this is pretty. This might end up looking really cool. I might have to do this for a set of dice at some point. That's part of the reason I like doing like some random thing. Like sometimes I'll mix uh, certain things for these D4s, and then I'll be like, "Oh, that actually looks really cool," and I'll come back later and just make a full set of dice. So who knows? This might end up being something like that. Where I'm just putting random colors here, and it's like, "Oh, that's kind of nice, actually." Let's maybe do that again. Let me make a couple more crystals though. So I can get it off of my first right here. Uh, and I am gonna probably claw it after I get all of these lids on, which will take a minute. Um, so I think I might need to put some more air into my air compressor, which is loud. So it'll just be easier to do that off stream. But let's uh, let's get all these lids on, and we can. You can go over all the different things that you got made. Made today. All right. All right. I've got a little bit of a little bit of orange left. Put that into one of the little tiny rock uh, ones. taking all of my um, stir sticks out so hopefully I can use them again otherwise they'll get completely stuck in these containers and this is this is the clear that had a little bit of that uh, multi-chrome purple in it let's get that okay cool uh, and let's just like this a little bit more purple as well I'm going to throw this purple in with this purple. That's fine. I just want to try and get these filled up as much as possible so I don't have to try and go back later and put more, even more resin into them, which is happens every once in a while because it, you know, it sinks down into all the little air gaps and everything. So we'll, if we can overfill those a little bit, we will. I think we've got everything. I'm going to spritz everything down with a little bit more rubbing alcohol um, just so that if there's any air bubbles, it helps, helps break the surface tension, helps those air bubbles to bop. To bop? Yes, these air bubbles are having to bop. Uh, to pop. Um, but let's start getting some lids on things. We do have our crystals here. These ones we actually did most recently. Uh, we have our our purple and orange ones. So see, they're, it's definitely sinking, so I have fingers crossed for how that's going to look. I think it might end up looking cool. Love bopping air bubbles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, oh, this is my favorite song. Also, hello. Glad you can make it. Uh, just start putting these lids on. I don't want to push down too hard. How are you doing today? I don't want to push down too hard on this because uh, I don't want to squish all of the resin out. I want a little bit of extra resin, like I mentioned, just so I know there's enough to fill in where the air bubbles are. Uh, that, this one. Okay. This one, I think, needs a little bit of resin in the number there. It's all kind of, uh, oh, you've been lurking and watching. 
That's, that's always welcome. Glad you could hang out. Hope you're having a, a good day. Oops, all right, let me put that lid on there. Yeah, I, that's part of the reason that, like, I'll just talk nonstop. Uh, even if there's no one, like, in the chat or anything, is because I figure there's people that, like, lurk and stuff. And, like, I know I personally, I don't watch a ton of live streams. But when I do, like, I kind of put it on as almost background noise just to something else. So I figure people are, are probably not actually watching so much as listening, maybe. Just because, you know, I'm just figuring because that's what I do. Um, so I, I try to make it so... Oof. Yeah, that makes sense. I hope you feel better soon. That's gotta suck. But I'm glad I'm glad you're uh, I'm glad you're getting some rest. That's good. But yeah. Ah, okay. Uh. But that 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 does also make sense. I feel like so like like I said I don't watch a ton of live streams. Part of that is because I feel like it takes a certain amount of Oh good, oh good, I'm glad. I'm glad you're you're on the on the men. Um like uh, I was gonna say though like I I'm really bad at lurking when it comes to live streams. Like, I don't know. To be fair, I'm I'm a chatty person, but like it, it if I'm in like a live stream, especially if it's like a smaller live stream, I always feel like I have to talk to keep the conversation going. It's a bit like having people over to my house. Even if it's not my live stream, like, I always feel like I need to keep everybody entertained to a certain extent, if that makes sense. And so, like, I love having people over to my house, but also it's, like, tiring because I'm, like, always on. And even when I'm just watching live streams, like, I'm kind of that way. Because um, it's just like, oh, I must, I must continue the conversation with this person. Um, so, like... Uh, uh, sometimes I'll watch like back the, the VODs and stuff too but you're the same yeah I don't know I feel like part of live streaming uh, the fun of it is that it's kind of a social thing at least for me that's part of the reason I enjoy live streaming is because I like chatting with people you prefer a quieter stream that's fair I, I realized that like my favorite streams to watch are kind of like the in-between big and small streamer type things. That sounds weird, but like a chat where you can actually like, it's moving slow enough that you can actually chat with other people in the chat or the person streaming, but it's big enough that like I don't feel like I have to try and carry the conversation in the chat. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like that's, that's my sort of like ideal. Um, there's a couple streamers that have like maybe like a hundred people that watch their stream like in their chat type thing there'll be like a hundred people in the chat yeah chat interacting is only yeah exactly um, yeah part of part of why I started streaming was just to get some social interaction during quarantine just like I need to talk to people some people up to um, I guess, like, it, it kind of has, I, for me, it kind of has that art class feel of, like, what's everybody working on? I want to work on arts and crafts projects or, like, chatting with people and seeing what everybody else is doing. All that sort of fun stuff. Um, more cat hair! Get out of there. But, yeah, I think, I feel like that's, that's my, that, that's, that's, like, my ideal stream to watch. Is that a... Oh. oh, okay. This is this is the correct one to have the weird pieces of hair falling out. I have some weird strands in here. You follow lots of makers and crafters. Yeah, yeah. I do too. I should watch. I should watch more maker making and crafting streams. But I've definitely made some friends on here too, which has been has been fun. Some some other folks that stream 
like reds and stuff. You know, it's always fun to go like, just go chat and be like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Type thing. Yeah, there are some lovely communities out there. I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's, I feel like that's the, the important part, really. Like, it doesn't really matter the size necessarily of the streamer, but it's all about, like, the people that you're in contact with. That, that sounds strange, but, like, I don't know. There's, there's, there's some, some really nice groups of people out there. I'm trying to get this lid on. I've gotten a little distracted. Okay. I'm going to put that, I think, underneath something else because I think it needs something on top of it to hold it down. We're going to see how these turn out. These ones have some, like, thread and stuff in them. So I'm going to go for kind of a spiderweb look. But we'll, we'll see how well that goes. Let's put that. Uh, nope, I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's start putting these... More cat hair! I think I tracked cat hair down here on my sweater. I think that's what it is. I mentioned, I think, once before that I really should just, like, have a sweater that I leave in here. So I can't... I don't track cat hair in on it. And I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I could leave this sweater in here, maybe. I'm always wearing this sweater in here anyways. <laughs> That's lined up. Put that on top of there. I'm gonna squish those down a little bit with a little bit of weight. You have cat and dog hair mixed in everything you make. What sort of stuff do you make? Do you also do resin stuff? Yeah, I've definitely made the joke that you get complimentary cat hair with every purchase. That's uh, definitely definitely something I have said before. <clears throat> All right, just trying to get the last of these lids on. Uh, you do powder and cast but not tried resin. Oh, cool! That's very cool. Uh, I I love powder. Like I've never really done pottery, but I find it really cool. Um, do you, do you stream it or um? You just let here actually wait I'm gonna if you don't have to this is just if you want to but I have I have a discord and there's a channel in there for posting photos of like your art that you you're working on or that you've done oh you stream okay cool I'll just come check that out once you're feeling better of course um but I have a spot there for people to, to post like artwork that they've done or that they're working on. So feel free to like post stuff there. Cause I'd love to see what you're what you're making. But no pressure. I know discords can get overwhelming. And there's definitely been discords where I've joined and I'm just like, mm, too much going on. Too much going on. But I do think that, that my Discord's fairly chill, so that's nice. It's mostly just people talking about D and D and arts and crafts. And art, D and D arts and crafts, <laughs> character art and the like. But I don't know. I'm always I'm always excited to see what people are working on. All right, let me just put these on top. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. How am I gonna do this? Uh huh. That link didn't work. Huh. Um, if you go to my about section, there should be a link there too, but I'm wondering if it, uh, should be the same link. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fix that. Okay, give me just a second here. I swear that my, my Discord link breaks so often, I don't know why. I don't know why. It just doesn't want to work for me. Alright, let's put that on there. So, I'm going to try and stack some stuff. See if I can get these on here at these angles. 
Um, hmm. Okay. This is going to be this is going to be kind of a fun balancing act. Okay, I think I might go with this. There we go. And this one. I just got resin on my arm, which is unfortunate. Oh wait, I think I can put it back here. There we go. And this one can just go flat. All right, I think that is everything resin-wise. Let me take my gloves off. I'll see if I can get that link working for you. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Shouldn't have expired. All right, give me just a second. I don't know, the Discord links always confuse me for some reason. They always confuse me. Let me go here. Here. Take away my invites. Um, okay, let me... Okay. I don't know why it always does this. that works for you. Yeah, that should be the right one. Man, I don't know, I don't know why my Discord links always break. <laughs> oh, you found my Instagram. Oh, yeah, that works too. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, I'd love to see, I'd love to see what you're, uh, what you're working on. But anyways, I've got all of my stuff, uh, in my tray here. I'm going to go put it into the pressure pot. So I'm going to wrap everything up. Um, I do stream every Saturday at noon Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you ever want to come hang out again, that's that's when I'm that's when I'm on. Um, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully I can see you guys again soon. And I 